So that'll be coming at the end. All right, so let's go live. Okay. Okay, we, we are live. Hi everybody and welcome to Slow Art Day at the Frost Art Museum. This is our very first virtual Slow Art Day and we are super, super excited. Um, I'm Miriam Machado, I'm the uh, education curator at the Frost. And uh, for those of you who don't know what Slow Art Day is, it's a day once a year, it's a global worldwide movement to ask everybody to take a moment and slow down. You know that saying of, uh, you know, stop and smell the roses. We were always rushing and moving around and, and going back and forth. And more than ever at this moment, we need to slow down, take a moment to take a deep breath and focus on looking at art, which is what Slow Art Day is all about. Uh, the, when we slow down and you ask yourself why slow, we do discover other things. We have a moment to really look at details. And today we have a fantastic, amazing artist, Carol Brown Goldberg, who lives and works just outside of Washington, DC. She has exhibited at the Frost uh, back in 2017 and it brought over 500 students to come and participate in a collaborative mural. Uh, we saw her works in black and white and color. I mean, it was just an amazing, amazing event. Uh, and her Tangled Nature series, which is what we had on view, is what we're gonna explore again today. Um, this uh, series brings to us uh, an investigation that the artist has done between art and science and how that translates into art and meditation and many other things. So um, uh, one more note though, that Slow Art Day is a very special day as well for all of the Frost uh, folks. Um, it is dedicated to the memory of Helen Venero and we thank the Venero family for keeping this program going. Um, so before we get started and meet all of you, or at least you all meet Carol, which is um, going to be fantastic. Uh, let's take a quick poll. Let's see who's out there. Who's signed in today? Who's, who's, uh, who's joining us and tuning in? So you'll see on your screen a poll. Um, just to tell us very quickly, if you have a moment to just uh, indicate, you know, more or less where you fall into, and that will help us. So we're going to leave it up for a few more seconds, and then we're going to get ready to talk to our guest artist, Carol Brown Goldberg. And just for a note, um, just to keep things flowing um, today, we won't have a chat box, but um, you're welcome to submit your comments and questions to Carol directly. You'll see her links at the end of this presentation and also on uh, FIU's social media. We will be there waiting for your questions and your comments. So, um, Wesley, you can go ahead and, um, Wesley is our, our tech. Uh, thank you. And um, we can put it up again later or just continue. We're good? Okay. All right, Carol. So I'm very excited to have you here today with us. Um, like I mentioned before, you're um, in Washington, D.C., just outside of Washington, D.C. You uh, study at the University of Maryland at the Corcoran School of Art. You've been a professor for many years. You've um, received numerous awards and accolades for all your work. Uh, tell us a little bit about um, what, what, how do you begin the art making process? How does it, um, how do you develop ideas? What inspires you? Um, just is, is your approach meditative? Tell us a little bit more about your approach to creating art. Right. So I hope you can hear it. Okay. Um, so the most important thing for creating art is to have a space, whether it's a desk, I'm in my apartment, where I live now. Um, I've turned this room into a studio. So my teacher, Jean Davis, who was known for stripe paintings in the 1960s, was a mentor and 
he would say to all of us students then to create a system. Walk into your studio and have a system. It worked particularly for me. Um, and I've always had a system. So I'm in the studio at nine in the morning and a good friend said to me, do not answer the phone, don't see people. I followed that. So for decades, I'm isolated as all of us are now. So yeah. it's, it's a kind of secret I've had that I'm, everyone is now experiencing, which is to be isolated, to have solitude, to be alone is a time to um, create. Um, I call it create. Um, that's what I've been doing. So it's um, walking in, having um, a canvas or paper in front of me, picking up a pen now or a brush as it as it was before these before uh, tangled nature, and just going right to my canvas. My hand is very spontaneous. It works with my brain. I call it brend, which is the blend of the brain, the hand, and, <laughs> the pen. and just start making minds. I know a, a bit where I'm going, but I don't follow where I'm going. I just let it spontaneously flow. Well, Carol, you know, a lot of times um, for those of us who are artistically inclined and those of us who are not, uh, being faced with a blank page, with a blank canvas, uh, just like a writer would be faced with a blank page and start writing, sometimes it's a bit intimidating. So do you have any special um, strategies or any recommendations so that we could create something at the end of this uh, segment uh, yes. inspired by you? Yes, I, I think um, that um, the best thing to do is get a pen, any pen. I've got a little pen, a big, like a magic marker, and you just put it on your canvas, wherever, whatever you're doing. Actually, it's doodles. It's really honoring the doodles that you did in school when you should. Right. Yes, of course. Right? Taking yes. notes. So, so let's take a look at... Um, what you call a doodle <laughs> in one of your works. Let's take a look at Eden number eight. Um, now, this is a pen and ink on paper, but when you were um, exhibiting at the Frost, some of these works were monumental in scale, um, and they just blew our minds of the number of lines and details in these yeah. works. So can you, can you tell us a little bit more about this process? Uh, this is just black and white, there's no color. Um, how, how do you start with this and end up with this magnificent work? So I start with a line I could show you now or um, by making a line on here. Paul Clay said it was taking a line for a walk. Yes. You I love that quote. I love that quote. Yeah. And just complete the form. Do another going in any direction. have it swirl around and you just, it, it doesn't, it's, it, people say they can't draw because they can't make a straight line. I've never made a straight <laughs> line, right? It's always, it's always curved. What I learned at, the, at FIU, which was um, really eye-opening from the students, even the little ones from the neighborhood school, yes. up to grad students in the med school, was that everybody has their own way of making lines and patterns. What, so what I do is I start like this and I go across the whole canvas. And every time I think of an, ob of an object, I put it in. And that's what I learned from your students who weren't necessarily doing lines that depict foliage or nature. They were doing designs and different kinds of patterns which freed me up and my recent works, I will put in geometry. Oh, wow. So, so, um, so geometric and organic forms. Um, 
right? But the geometry is here. Yeah. I made it large so you could see, but it's actually yeah. very small. It's almost uh, like, where's Waldo? Like you might look for it. And I think that that's what everyone can do. We all have our own memories and sort of our history and there are objects in it that we grew up with, that we keep finding, that we're attracted to. Um, my brother taught me how to make a profile. So I've quickly, very tiny, put profiles. Is your brother an artist? I think so, but <laughs> I, I think he inspired me when I was so young that he doesn't remember inspiring. Maybe the older brother, older brother. Older brother, right. Okay, yeah, older brothers are a good thing. Yeah, um, so, you know, when you're doing these lines, are you emptying your mind of all thoughts and just focusing on making the line? Um, what, does it matter if, you know, do you have to have some idea or do you just want to have a blank slate in your mind, let go of everything and then just, just create. Yeah. I, I, sometimes it's blank and I go to it. And if I put on music that will bring back memories. Um, and I will, the memories and the visions and the fantasies, including the disappointments, the expectations all come to my mind, but they all get absorbed as I move my hand. The other thing is that I listen a lot to books on tape and especially to science, lectures about DNA, um, or things I don't understand because listening to them, I love science, I don't understand it, but it begins to get embodied in my paintings. So I do small areas that look like cells or molecules, I think, but of course, I mean, it's just inspired because I books on tape. So Carol, in, in Eden number eight, extravagant Eden number eight, um, yeah. when I first look at it, I think about nature and I think about organic shapes and forms and, and just gardens. Um, is this a, a, a correct way of, of interpreting your work or, it, or is there more there that I can't see at first glance? Um, I think it's that for sure. What you, I mean, it is nature and gardens. And it is that as it is a metaphor for so much in life, how we're all interconnected, how we all are in a sense entangled. We're entangled with ourselves and our own thoughts and we're entangled with each other, which is a very positive thing that we're traumatically being deprived of now. It is a bit of a trauma. trauma. Yes. Yes. Uh, so I think that um, we both witnessed that with our students at FIU that they didn't know each other. They came from different departments. They came from um, even other campuses uh, from the community. And somehow they all congregated together, left their mark on this is an 18, uh, 11 by 18 inch piece of paper. We're talking about a 15 to by 20 foot piece of canvas stretched um, inside the gallery. And that got full, full of lines, full of connections. We saw those students talk to each other and um, also listen to music, which was something very um, much you know, needed in that process. And they sort of zoned out Right. I thought that was a, 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 an amazing, amazing thing. It was the first time ever we had done something like that at the Frost. And um, it, was, it was just fantastic. Really um, great, great, yeah. great activity. I um, felt, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I felt the same. I would look at this wall and I would see like six or eight students lined up against the wall. And um, I would watch each of them take a section and draw on it and then take the line and connect it to another student section. And it was this beautiful fusion of two hands, two brains, two minds yes. that were just being carried away and making this. And it's my feeling that, especially now in a time of trauma, um, and we're all quite traumatized by what's been going on, um, and the loss, losses we experience, um, 
In fact, one of the, the songs we played was Ivy and Adam Schlesinger just yes. the way of coronavirus. So I think at this particular time, um, art is an answer or using your hand to just let it spontaneously move is an answer to this kind of um, anxiety that we're experiencing. Yes, I agree. And, and as a museum educator, I, um, I would recommend that families can um, take a piece of paper, uh, two pens, any a fine point, a broad point, or a thicker point, and, and start from like the macro view, just make lines, and then come together as a family, put your pieces of paper together, and then start to connect to each other and sort of let go of the everyday stressors that we're all feeling and, and become inspired by Carol's work and create something of your own that way um, to you know, get a, li a little respite from all of this. Right. So Carol, um, so th this, this is wonderful and, and this mural that the students created um, for those of you who may not know, and I know we spoke about it briefly, um, uh, Carol donated it to Sweetwater Elementary School, uh, who had met her, had worked with her, had created art of their own, inspired by her, and then now they have it um, in their school, and they um, are a school that's very focused on conservation, and um, they became Everglades champions because they knew so much about conservation. And so now this is uh, sitting in their school, um, in their hallway, and they are going to continue to work in um, the way of conservation and learning more because of your work and because of your interaction with them. And now they have a reminder there on the, on the wall. So thank you for that. Um, those students are very, very lucky. Um, the other thing I wanted to know is uh, when you start to work, um, um, do you, um, at what point do you decide to add color? Um, I know you have works um, that have beautiful color and I, I believe, um, if I'm not mistaken, Henry Matisse is, is one of your influences. Um, let, let's look at the color uh, version, which is Maggie on my mind, which is one of my favorites actually. Yeah. Yeah, I love this. Yes, I love it too. It's fantastic. I mean, you know, um, we have a lot to look forward to when, when all of this is over, we can go back to museums and galleries and take a look at art and up close and personal. But this is, this is a fantastic image. Um, tell us a little bit more about the influence of color and the psychological effects of color and how you decide as an artist when to use color and when not to. Well, I used, I did Maggie on my mind um, a, a couple of years after I started the black and white. I started the black and white because I felt like I had always used color and I really honored Franz Klein and Ad Reinhardt. And, oh yeah, Franz Klein. And, and I also felt there was so much, it was so much noise in the culture, so much color in the culture through technology. It was so easy to see color everywhere. So it was a challenge for me to do black and white and I really enjoyed it. But the color Maggie on my mind um, is, uh, I just needed to get back to color when I did this. And, um, and my connection with Matisse, which I had somehow, which I had when I was at the Corcoran, um, it was really Klaus Ottman who connected this piece to Matisse and I thought, Ah, it's another secret that's out that mm -hmm. I still love Henri Matisse. I still love his um, design, his composition, his sense of color. And it felt like in contemporary culture, Matisse was, you know, whatever, too decorative, too, too not fashionable, but it's, it's truly still of my heart. So, um, and it, it makes me feel more connected with myself to say that about Matisse. Maggie on my mind was, um, the title means something too, which means that this is somebody from my childhood and that I had somewhat suppressed. 
And in the same way that the color came out and that Matisse, I honored as being one of the, my favorite artists. So I resurrected sort of someone from my childhood, Maggie. So that put it together. Psychologically, color is enormous, is everything. Um, and black to me is the essence of color. I have to use black in my paintings. Without black, I feel like we don't really know, we don't have, I don't have a sharp sense of color. Black heightens red and deepens yellow and makes green and blue richer. So that's my sense of color. There's also the science of color, which is if you're using red, balance it with green. If you're using too much orange, balance it with blue. So there is a science to color, which I like a lot, like honor. Well, um, yes, and, and your work is always investigating um, those intersections between art and science. Um, and this work here, and Maggie on my mind, um, are these, um, do you use any references or this is all imaginary plants or imaginary shapes or organisms that that you've um, uh, created. Uh, is there any aspect here from the microbiological sense, or is it wh where where do we go with this? Is it more uh, micro and the microorganisms we'd see under a microscope, or is this mo something more um, that we can ask really see with the na natural eye? Well, the the lines are invented. It's all invented, but I'm, I'm sure if we go back down to a microscopic level, some of these forms will repeat themselves. Um, I look at um, the yellow, the yellow uh, streaks coming out of the sun, the supposed sun, and I think it looks like the flagellum or bacteria swimming or... Um, uh-huh, yeah. It's, uh, I think it I think we can find the shapes that we see visually with it with our eye we can see it microscopically and that interests me the science of what we can't see yet mm -hmm. everything we do see is a reproduction of something internally or uh, in the microbiological world yeah, I mean, I can't help when I look at your work, even, first of all, I think they're fantastic because you can, they're imaginative, you, they, they don't have to represent the real world, although they can, but it also makes me think a lot about sacred geometry, how fascinating that is that we take for granted that everywhere around us, there are these patterns and combinations that, that the world, you know, exists, exists in nature, without even um, us having any hand in that, right? It's the, the greater power that be, that, that, that right. is. Um, so um, uh, I, I love this work and um, I'm glad you told us about the title because sometimes artists, you know, they'll put untitled and you have to sort of figure it out on your own. Um, and then there are titles and of course they do have some connection to the work, which I think is fantastic that you ate, were able to share that with us. So, um, do you, would you like to add any other comments about your when you choose color or is it just because sometimes you just need it because I know I do sometimes I you know and this is a different scale but sometimes I need the red lipstick to get me going and then other times no I, I'm okay with just gloss you know right. um, uh, yes go ahead I didn't I, want to interrupt you go ahead no I was going to add something I I don't know if we planned it I had um I broke my hand this year, last year. Oh, yes, tell and us about that. Yes, yes, I, 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 I remember this story, yes. Right, so I broke my right hand and I'm right-handed and I'm left with a left hand that has never drawn, like a baby, like this is a baby hand that never drew. Um, so I had to teach myself, but, bef but before, after I did a couple of things with my left hand, I was so hungry for color. I felt I thought of the Cobra artists from Copenhagen, Brussels, and Amsterdam after yes. World War II. Yeah. There was the 1948 to 1952. They wanted to bring art back to Europe. So they used bright colors and 
what I call crayon colors. And I thought that's what I have to do. So I, um, I don't know if you can see this. Yes. Oh, fabulous. That's fantastic. Look at the, the tactile qualities of the, of the paint. I mean, it's almost like an impasto, right? But it's, it's exactly. acrylic. So the colors I used with my left hand and squeezed all the color out. So I didn't know where I was going, what I was doing. Then when the, the um, cast came off of my right hand, I went back in and did the black pen and ink, the little drawing in between the colors. Um, so I combined color with black and white and, in, and entanglement. Wow. And wow, that's fabulous. I love it. I love it. And, you know, more important, I think that the story, what it does is reminds us that art is a universal language and art is a way to solve problems. Even Henry Matisse, who um, became ill with cancer, started to still create with colored paper and, right. and cutting with scissors and creating with scissors. So, you know, we, we, uh, we embrace our challenges, but we right. use art to navigate through them. And this is a great example of how you were able to navigate through a challenge as an artist, which must have been very, very difficult. And yet now something better or something different or something that yeah. you never expected came out of all of that experience, right? Exactly. That's what we're hoping for as well. I think um, art is a, is a great healer. So um, speaking of, of science, um, Carol, you know, there's a lot of publications now more than ever that um, based on neuroscience, how activating um, the brain, the creative part of the brain, how that helps us in an over, uh, to improve our overall well-being, um, to, to make us feel better, um, to focus, etc. What are your thoughts and your, and, 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 and your investigations and all the things that you are constantly learning about? Um, what do you think about that? What do you think about this um, claim that um, art will actually improve us. In fact, there was a New York Times article recently that said that looking at art or going to museums will make us live longer. Um, what are your thoughts on, on all this? I think, that, I think that is definitely true. And I think the concept of slow art between the object and the viewer slowing down, the viewer slowing down and looking art is a discovery period. It's really a discovery. And I think of that when I created the Tangled Nature is that I want my art to be seen up close. I don't want to look across a wall as I most a lot of museums and I can recognize the artists from across the room and there isn't enough in terms of uh, shape to, to hold my interest. Um, but so that's a different, a different um, thought. But the process of art is what I think needs to be slowed down. This slow art has a lot to do with what we do and the process of using our hand and letting our brain um, go where it wants to go and the hand goes where it wants to go. At some point, the two will connect and something will happen. Um, there, there's a, it's very strange. I only remember the first name of this psychiatrist in, in Boston named Bessel, Vanderkrop, or I, I'm, I should know that name, but I wasn't thinking of say, talking about it, but he had said years ago, while I was working, listening to NPR, he said, um, he was interviewed and he said that PTSD, which our soldiers have gone through. Yeah, post-traumatic um, syndrome, yes. Stress syndrome. Do, there's no drug that can help that. What he said it says is movement and energy can help. And every time we use our brain and our hand, we are expending energy in a really positive way so I think in terms of, and we all, we all have before this large collective crisis, yeah. each one of us has tiny mini traumas all during the day. Um, yes. And art 
is a way of helping us be aware of it, connecting it, putting in its proper place and create and making an object at the same time. I think, I think, in fact, I, uh, I'm thinking about what's going to happen after this. And I think this connection between art and health is, which you had a lecture on and workshops on when I was down yes. years ago. Yes, with one of our sponsors, Baptist Hospital, yeah. Um, we, I, we've, we've worked inspired by you um, tremendously and, and it has, I've seen it uh, firsthand how much um, folks are hesitant at first, but once you start to create those lines, it really does transport you to another place. Uh, and then we've added music, as you mentioned, and we've added aromatherapy, actually. Um, and that has created this environment where you really feel like you can let go of all your anxiety and stress. Um, so it's, it's been fantastic. I, th I think of art as beyond galleries, beyond museums. I mean, definitely for galleries and for museums. Yes, yes. But after this event, that's happened. I think, uh, and the loss of jobs, I think one thing is so many people are going to come out of this experience as artists or wanting to incorporate art into their life. I think it, I, yes. I think the combination of art and music while we can do it and listen to it is going to be very meaningful for each person. Yes. And, much more than I'm not even expressing it as much because I'm thinking it's going to be a new intention in the art world. That art becomes an intention for health as well as hanging it in your home or whatever, putting it on the floor. Yeah, it's, it's uh, definitely going to be interesting to see um, ahead uh, what, what comes out of all this. I mean, obviously, you know, like speaking in scientific terms for every action, there is a equal and, um, you know, reaction. So we'll, we'll come out on the other end with other things now that we never imagined before. Um, hopefully there will be positive things that we can embrace. And um, as in human beings, we can improve and improve our relationships and everything else that we've always been try striving to do, you know. Um, so Carol, you know, I, I, you did a couple of lines there, um, but now we, we, we are more in tune and understand better this process with the hand and the mind and the brain connection and just drawing. Do you want to just show us a couple more lines like um, our families at home, uh, as I suggested, could start on, on different pieces of paper, um, but I'm sure that um, they'd love to see a few more of how what you started can go a little bit further. And, um, and then we'll see, um, we don't have questions today, but I know that the questions will come. Don't forget, you can ask us questions on social media at The Frost, um, on our Facebook, uh, follow us there, follow Carol. She has also Instagram like we do, and um, make sure you reach out to her. At the end of this presentation, you will have those links as well. So Carol, show us a few more lines. Great. And so, I wanna watch you in, uh, in action. Great. <laughs> and I'll show you with, I showed you a thicker pen, which yes. is acrylic paint pen, very much like a magic marker. Um, and this is a smaller one. So I use, just two points, big and small. Here's the small one. I mean, you can, um, you can incorporate whatever you're thinking, just put into your drawing. And I kind of know the direction, but I may change it in the middle. And then I think of rounded flowers, or I think of cells, and I think of how many, how many things are in the cell. I mean- oh, A bunch, the mitochondria, the, the vacuole, the, I, 
from my biology days. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff in there. So let your hand go. Um, connected. You know, in the real world, falling geometry doesn't make sense. And that's just the thing. You don't have to make sense when you're doing. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. It's very liberating not to have to make sense all the time, right? <laughs> wow. um, and I, I'd also like to add that um, for uh, the parents who have now become at-home school teachers, uh, if you investigate the elements of art and the principles of design, uh, one of the seven elements of art is line. And there are multitudes of combinations of lines that you can easily Google. And you can also use this activity as a uni unifying uh, activity for your family, but also as an educational activity to explore line and, uh, and then let everybody just be free to do whatever they want using their imagination and creativity. So um, any last thoughts, Carol, before we um, start to wind down? As, as I do these little circles, I'm just reminded that I never leave empty space. Between oh, okay. Lines. Um, is it nature of words, empty space? And in yes. every, all the space there, we, there are immeasurable. There are quarks and photons and there are molecules and there's so much matter that we can't see. Um, technology and electron microscope makes it available to us. So I fill in all the spaces because, yeah, I fill in all the spaces and I'll leave, for instance, Maggie on my mind. The empty space is the black on top. Uh-huh, right. So, I leave empty space to contrast line with emptiness. Which is also part of, uh, of these things I'm speaking about, uh, of, of compositions, that these elements of art and principles of design exist in all compositions, that if we take the time and slow down and take a look at it and know a little bit more, you can start to focus and, and depict and see where these things are depicted within a canvas uh, or a piece of paper or anything like that. So Carol, thank you. Um, thank you so much for spending time with us today. It's been a pleasure. I'm really jealous that I don't have a canvas and a marker, but I do have paper and sure. have lots of other stuff. So <laughs> I will be pulling my things out to, you know, try to let go of all the stress as well. Um, I want to thank you for your time. Thank you for being always so uh, generous with, um, with us, you, you've given us so much um, into our community as well. Uh, the kids at Sweetwater and on behalf of the Frost, I'd like to thank you deeply for always supporting us. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, the Venero family as well who has um, supported our Floor Day initiative from the very beginning for many, many years now. Um, and so before we go, I'm going to ask you uh, one more question. Uh, we're going to put up another little poll um, before we end with our slide of contacts and, and uh, links. So um, you should see your next poll up and tell us what, um, first of all, if this session was helpful um, in your um, increasing your knowledge about art making at home to a way to wellness. Um, and maybe what other topics you might want us to present with fabulous artists like Carol and uh, in the future, uh, since now we're all becoming uh, TV hosts and movie stars like me. <laughs> and you, Carol, as well. You've done film too, so you're, you're much better at it than I am. Um, so let's see how that um, shows up. I see that everyone has said yes that this has helped them feel better about themselves. That is fantastic. And that's what Slow Art Day is all about and art making. Um, once again, I thank you all. I think um, we're pretty good almost. Oh, we got 63% of the folks that are watching voted. We've got a few more um, seconds to go. 
Any other thoughts, Carol? What are you going to do next? I'm going to finish the work I'm working on in here, but I think this is so excellent. I think people, you know, need connection. We all need, con especially people who are not used to being artists, being alone, being in solitude. Yes, absolutely. Great. All right. Fantastic. So we are going to um, definitely host more of these and hopefully see more of you, Carol. Um, yeah. I know I'm always inspired and I'm inspired even when I don't see you because I, I love what you do. Um, let's uh, leave uh, the, the, the slide up so we can all see and take out that poll from your screen. Um, here's Carol's contact for those of you who'd like to reach out to her and learn more about her work. Um, make sure that you visit us at um, frost.fiu.edu. And um, thank you. Thank you so much for joining yeah. us today. I hope to see you soon and stay well. And everyone stay well, stay healthy, um, follow the guidelines and uh, we'll all get through this together. I know we can and art on. Thanks again. Thanks. Bye-bye, Carol. Bye-bye. I think that's it. Okay, we're good. All right. Okay, um, so how many people joined us? It was like 48. 48, that's good for the first time ever. That's fine. Um, what's your professional uh, opinion? <laughs>